Hi, everybody. Welcome to my live. Would you do you need my assistance, 25 year old? Okay. So I'm doing something kind of different. I'm going to do this Facebook Live in conjunction with an Insta Live. So are we live here? Okay. It's checking for connection. All right. So um, I'm getting a lot of really great feedback from this series and um, I'm finding that so much of the information that I'm developing is just common stuff that we tell our clients over and over and over. So I'm really excited to put this into a, a video format and um, share my knowledge to help educate home buyers to create wealth and own property, right? That's what we all want. We all want, want to own property. So um, welcome to part two, Home Buyer Bootcamp, Mortgage 101. Where to start and what to expect important things to know, important terms to know with regard to mortgages, mortgage principles and terms. So where to start? So first, you need to get qualified. Where do you stand? Uh, do you have reasonable expectations? Does it make sense? Do you have the money? Can you afford it? Um, or should you just continue to rent? Those are the things that you know, you need to find out what makes sense for you and your family. Number one, get pre-qualified. Number two, you need to target a sales price. I mean, right? We need to know what's the sales price that you need that, that what's the payment? You know, what is your, what's your desired payment? What do you think that you can afford? What do you want? And keep in mind, you know, when I'm talking to people and their rent is 1500 and they want a $1,500 mortgage payment, I mean, that's just really not practical. So my job as a loan officer is to bring out all the information and educate the person as to the reality of purchasing a home. You know, maybe in 2011, that would have been possible, but it's 2019. Welcome to 2019. Okay, so um, number two, target the sales price. What's the desired payment? Also, what's your max? You know, you you have to have a threshold. You know, what, what is it that number that's going to put you over the edge? We don't want to go past that because we want to, what they call house poor, you, you want to find a, a payment, you know, where you can still go out and buy shoes and stuff, right ladies, feel me? Okay, um, number three is you need to target an area. For example, when I bought my first home, I wanted to buy a home in Rancho Cucamonga right because rancho is great but i could not afford rancho so i bought a home in fontana if you're not willing to sacrifice on area or square footage or room or school district and you're only you're you're only wanting a certain a certain area that you may find yourself just kind of sitting on the sidelines and and not jumping in and that that really is a shame. You know, we all have to start somewhere. And starting somewhere is the whole point of buying a home. You know, you're not going to end up with your forever home on your first home purchase. Um, okay, so target area, target sales price, and get, get qualified. Um, after that, we're going to be looking at, um, okay, so how long does it take? So how long does it take to buy a house and what to expect? And... It's so super easy. I mean, if I put you in touch with one of my super experienced, qualified buyer's agent specialist, you're gonna be in escrow in two, to week, in two weeks, and you're gonna be closing escrow in 30 days. So you'll be, you know, from the time that you talk to me, get me all of your paperwork, you could actually be moving into a house in 45 days. 30 days if you're a rock star and get me all of your paperwork right away. So it's, it's really something that's very, very simple. Now, I think um, sometimes if you have a certain, we're working with an, a client right now that has a certain requirement of acreage because he wants to run um, a little side business on the property. And that is taking four weeks to get him into escrow. The first escrow we got him into, the value didn't come in and the agent or realtor, listing agent and seller didn't lower the price. So now we're back to um, looking for a home and, and that's a little bit challenging. So on average in this market, you can expect to be shopping for a home for two to four weeks 
And then an average escrow is about 30 days. You know, we can knock it out of the park in two weeks. Sometimes you're buying a house and a seller, for whatever reason, you know, they want a 45 day escrow. Maybe they've been there a long time and have a, a whole bunch of stuff to pack up. So we can all appreciate that, right? Um, now the two most important factors and how long it takes to buy a house is going to be primarily the agent. And the other part is gonna be your, um, are you realistic? You know, are you genuinely realistic? And this is something that you're you're gonna do, and you're gonna you know make sacrifices. And you know, maybe you want a three bedroom, but all you can afford is a two bedroom. So if you are, or if you are, um, let's see, hold on, where am I at? <laughs> uh, so uh, the first thing about the real real estate agent, it is so important. You know, a quality agent that knows the area. That, that has relationships with other listing agents. Do you know how important that is? When an agent has a reputation for delivering, for being professional, um, and knowing how to show properties, it's not really as easy as you think. You know, a real estate agent just doesn't like put a list together and then go show properties. They take a lot of time before they go show the property. Oftentimes they go preview. If they've got 20 properties, they don't wanna be in the car with you for like 10 hours. I mean. I would, but that's me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but most agents, they want to go preview the properties and really show you the cream of the crop. You know, show you the good ones. Show the ones that are, you know, have good neighbors and good neighborhoods, good streets, things like that. That will take a whole day to do. And then they've got to, um, then let's say the ones that they really like, then they're going to call the agent, find out the seller's motivation. They're going to find out, um, you know, what is the seller looking for? Um, there's all kinds of things that happen. And during those calls are when the rapport building happens. When that buyer's agent calls a listing agent, they are setting a, they're setting a tone. They're setting a tone for um, a relationship. And a great buyer's agent is gonna be congenial, professional, kind, funny, they're going to be all of those things, all of those things, because they're working for you. And if you like that property and they write that offer, if that contact that that buyer's agent has with that listing agent was so premium and fabulous, your chances of getting your offer accepted in a competitive market situation or multiple offer situation are going to be extremely high. Now, conversely, somebody that's not very experienced, that doesn't have those skills, it's really going to lessen your chances. Now, um, in terms of time, again, getting into escrow, let's say I have an unrealistic buyer, somebody that is really set on a certain area, and seemingly to me, I'm thinking, gosh, if I was an agent, thank God I'm not, if I was an agent having to spend Saturdays and nights and weekends with this buyer, showing them property and they're just not realistic, it would be a huge turnoff. And I, I feel like I just wouldn't wanna waste my time. A good buyer's agent knows how to have intelligent conversations with buyers, knows how to um, spell out the buying opportunities and is able to explain th this purchase in, in more of like an investment strategy. So I find that through education, simple education and partnering with quality realtors and people that really know about real estate can turn someone that's possibly unrealistic into somebody, move them into a real, a reality space. You know, buying a house is really scary. So a lot of times people that have been sitting on the sidelines, they're sitting on the sidelines for a reason because they're afraid to step in. And that's, it comes back to all of the knowledge that we impart and the education that we impart on our clients to empower them to know, like to really know that they're making a right decision. So they get into escrow um, and they're confident and they're happy and all they have to worry about is packing because that's awful, right? So, so we got you on the real estate and the mortgage side. All you gotta do is pack and move in. So, um, okay, so the next, um, the next part are gonna be there's a lot of stuff in mortgages. So I'm just going to share with you some of the basics. 
You know, some of the things that if you've never, you know, a lot of people that I work with, they're buying homes for the first time. Maybe their parents don't own homes. So they don't have this um, comfort level with mortgage or real estate terms. So um, the big one is something called PITI, which is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And principal, of course, it's like, you owe $100,000 and you pay $1,000. Well, that's your principal payment. However, in mortgages, mortgages are amortized. And what that means is the principal paying years are further in. So the first part of when you're paying your mortgage, you're largely paying interest, unfortunately. So your bigger interest-bearing years are when you move further into the loan. Principal, interest, taxes. So when we talk about taxes, we are only, only, only talking about property taxes. So when you own a home in California, most likely your property tax basis is around one and a quarter percent. If it's a hundred thousand dollar home, it's likely to have the taxes um, taxed at one and a quarter percent. So that's hundred and twenty-five dollars a month, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. So um, in newer areas, though, like let's say houses that were built in the 2000s, a lot of those have a higher tax base. Uh, 2006, 7, 8, a higher tax base. And that's because um, those taxes go for infrastructure development, like sidewalks, parks, schools, and things like that. So um, we take that into consideration when we're qualifying you. Um, but that's kind of like further down the road, you know, when we get to um, start targeting you and you're working with an agent and we're figuring out your areas and things like that. Okay, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. Insurance has to do with property only. So your property insurance. So think of it as if it burns down, we'll rebuild it. So you pay an annual premium for fire insurance. It's also called hazard insurance. So those two are or property insurance. It's used pretty interchangeably in our industry. And we usually, as a general rule, I use a, a quarter percent. So if it's a $100,000 property, I use 0.25 or 0.3, so that's $30 a month. Um, on like a $400,000 property, it's probably like $75 a month. Okay, so PITI, broken down. Um, another part that's not familiar for a lot of people is mortgage insurance. So sometimes, not only do you have property insurance, but you have something called mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is something that's on all FHA loans, it's not on VA loans, and it's on conventional loans on a sliding scale. The more money you put down, the, the lower the premium. Um, a handful of other really important terms are title insurance, escrow, and being an escrow. So title is um, an insurance policy that's put on a property in California to protect you, to protect you against any future claims on the property. Um, title insurance is something that it's we generally just kind of estimate like if it's a I don't know again a four hundred thousand dollar property a title policy is probably around eight hundred nine hundred dollars escrow escrow is a third party company that's facilitating the flow of paperwork between the buyer the seller um, the lender um, and they handle the deposit so Escrow is this neutral third party that basically does a whole bunch of paperwork. And usually they're, they're run by really nice men and women who um, help keep the flow of things going along. I guess I should have a better explanation of that, but really that's what escrow is. Did you know that in a lot of states, they don't even have escrow? Titles handle everything. In California, in Southern California primarily, we, it's customary to have title and escrow. And you know, both parties pay that. So escrow, um, there's an escrow fee for the buyer and the seller and title fee for the buyer and the seller. So that comes to something where people always say, gosh, what does it mean I'm an escrow, right? What does that mean I'm an escrow? Well, basically what that means is you're under contract. You have a, you have a, a, a contract to purchase that's been fully executed and you're, all of your paperwork has been forwarded to the escrow company and your deposit is with escrow. So basically you're under contract, you are in escrow. Um, another important 
term to note, and this we kind of get into it further down the road, is something called a loan application. So in the olden days, just like 10 years ago or so, uh, we just called it a loan application, right? It's just a loan application and a handful of disclosures. Now, primarily, it's referred to disclosures. So once you're under contract, um, lenders typically have a certain time period to get out all of your loan disclosures. And these loan disclosures are um, usually like a handful of important things. But to me, the most important thing is how much money do you need, what's your rate, and what's your payment. Um, unfortunately, these disclosures don't do a very good job at explaining that, and that's where we come into play whenever you get your offer accepted and, and we're there to hold your hand through the process. Loan documents, loan docs, docs, we use that term uh, pretty interchangeably, and that just means those are your final closing papers, and you're typically signing those at escrow or escrow sends out a traveling notary to sign those at your leisure. Mortgage broker versus mortgage lender, direct lender. I'm what's called a mortgage broker. Um, mortgage brokers are independent and able to go through multiple channel channels for financing. We have access to wholesale rates. Um, I choose to be a mortgage broker for many reasons, um, mostly because I just really like the freedom and I like to be able to offer my client the best. And I don't, um, I don't have a large corporation. I'm not paying all these salaries. I'm not having to pay for all this foo-foo stuff. So I run a small shop. I have small overhead. And I'm able to pass that on to my clients. So I like that very much. And I also like the ability to go to different lenders who are offering different things. And I like to give my clients the best rates. So when I have an offer that's accepted, I immediately go shopping to find um, that buyer the best rate and term out there. A mortgage lender or direct lender, I know I'm friends with so many mortgage people. You know, they're my, they're my people. And a lot of my um, peers work for big companies, big mortgage lenders, direct lenders. And all that means is that uh, they have big warehouse lines of money where I kind of go through the back door and get like this discounted fee they get a bulk of money and they they have loan officers that are on certain compensation plans and they you know because they offer all this training and they do all of this stuff they have to have a little bit higher profit margin and um that's not to say though that there's not a shit ton of great mortgage lenders uh, direct lenders out there that have great rates that are highly qualified that offer um, sensational service. So um, I came, I grew up in, in a direct lending environment and I, I loved it and I love the relationships that I've made and, and still have till this day. So um, I prefer the broker channel because I am one. <laughs> but so that's, that's the main difference. Um, I think that brings me to the end of uh, my video. And um, do you see any questions there, Jocelyn? All right, you can go ahead and end that one. I'm so happy that you tuned in today. I'm not seeing the comments or questions on the live, so I'll have to answer stuff um, when I end this. Anyway, thanks again for joining me. Have a beautiful day. If you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell, think of me, Teresa Timps, the SoCalLoanPro.com.